Hello, and welcome Ready, to Pirate News. One. I'm Brian Shaw. And I'm Maria Lewandowski. Today we'll give you the latest from across campus, tri-state area, and the globe. We'll also have your scene hall sports update and a five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. A senior undergraduate public relations major received multiple honors this summer before starting her last semester here at the university. Senior Madison Vance is a recipient of the Future PR Professional of the Year Award from the Public Relations Student Society of America, the New Jersey chapter, and the John D. Graham Scholarship from the PRSSA Foundation. The Future PR Professional of the Year Award is a prestigious award that honors an undergraduate student who demonstrates an understanding of and commitment to the public relations profession. As a recipient of this award, Vance exemplified outstanding, outstanding leadership, innovation, and creativity in her submission. Congratulations, Madison. On Monday, October 18th, Scene Hall alum Bob Lay hosted a Q&A joining those within Ready, the university and pillars of the sports media industry to discuss the latest in the John Gruden situation. The panel of ESPN's Bomani Jones, NFL Media's Judy Bautista, George Atala, Assistant Executive Director of External Affairs for the NFL Players Association, Professor Charles Grantham, and Professor B.J. Schechter fielded questions from Scene Hall students and alums on how the sports world has responded to the racist and homophobic comments by John Gruden while he was an analyst at ESPN and head coach of the Raiders organization. If you do not have a chance to sit in on this conversation over teams, you can still do so by following the link to the recorded discussion in the description. Seton Hall produces a $1.6 billion annual economic impact on the state of New Jersey. This information comes from a new independent analysis that focused on the societal and economic impact of the university through an assessment of its annual operations, capital and investments, ancillary spending, and the additional earnings or wage premium of its 100,000 plus alumni. This study was conducted by Philadelphia-based eConsult Solutions, Inc. The study also included a survey of volunteer service performed by students, faculty, and employees showing that 3,000 volunteers provide almost 50,000 hours of aggregate service to the community each year. In addition to the economic impact, all of Seton Hall's four campuses in South Orange, Newark, Nutley, and Clifton support more than 9,700 jobs throughout the state. In addition, the impact of the university spending on operations and capital improvements alone average in excess of $600 million annually. The additional earnings or wage premium of its 100,000 plus alumni. The deadline for applying for the CHAMP program is fast approaching. CHAMP is a one-on-one -on -one mentorship opportunity for current students within the Comart School to be paired with a Comart alum in the field they desire. All students must complete the application okay. detailing their experience here at Seton Hall and what they wish to get out of the mentorship program. The mentorship program, led by Comart's case director, Amanda Carcioni, and the course is offered in the spring semester. If you have any questions, contact amanda.carcioni at shu.edu.applications. Applications close this Friday. Now we'll send it over to Michael Federico for your Seton Hall sports update. Michael? Thanks, Maria. Hi, I'm Michael Federico with your Seton Hall Sports Update. The men's soccer team currently holds a record of 5-5-3. The Pirates tied St. John's at 0-0 Saturday in double overtime. The Pirates start off the season blazing hot with a record of 4-0-2. However, in their last seven games, they hold a record of 1-5-1. With four games remaining on the schedule deep into Big East play, Seton Hall looks to improve their conference record to help them get a higher seed in the Big East tournament. The Pirates' next game is tonight against UConn. Make sure to show some SHU pride and to come support your seniors on senior night. On the other side of the pitch, the women's soccer team fell to Creighton 2-0 on Saturday. After starting off the season 6-3, the Pirates have lost their last six games, making the record 6-9. With three games left on the schedule, the Pirates look to get back to 500 and finish the season strong. Seton Hall's next game is here in South Orange tomorrow night against St. John. Over on the hardwood, the women's volleyball team has had a somewhat streaky year so far. The team lost its last match against Marquette 3-1. Last Saturday, with an up-and-down season full of winning and losing streaks, Seton Hall has a record of 10-12. and 12. With, the game, with 10 games left, the Pirates can really have an impact on the Big East tournament and really make a name for themselves. Their next game is Friday here at Walsh Gym against Xavier. Lastly, basketball season is right around the corner. Yesterday, Seton Hall received a few Big East accolades with Andra Espinosa-Hunter and Lauren Park Lane of the women's team in getting preseason Big East first team honors, and Jared Roden of the men's team also receiving the same honor. 
The women's team pick, uh, was picked to finish third in the conference, while the men themselves find themselves fifth to finish in the stand. As November inches closer, you'll have you covered throughout the season as each Pirates team tries to live up to their preseason billing. That's all I've got for your Scene Hall Sports update. Once again, I'm Michael Federico. Now back to Marie and Brian with your local news. Twelve people were arrested Monday outside Congressman Josh Gottheimer's house in Bergen County protesting his lack of action on climate change issues. A young group of around 40 people called Sunrise Bergen gathered in the congressman's driveway around 1 p.m., urging him to resist bowing to corporate interests. Gottheimer has come under fire from progressives for insisting that the House pass the $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill without waiting for an agreement on separate spending legislation that would fight climate change while expanding health coverage and child care. A New Jersey health system fires 118 workers for refusing to get vaccinated against COVID-19. A spokeswoman for Robert Wood Johnson Bar Barnabas Health said on Monday that these employees had been terminated for failing to comply with the health system's deadline to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. They had until Friday to get immunized. The spokeswoman said, quote, regrettably and despite all best efforts, 118 staff members have not complied with the mandate and are no longer employees of RWJ Barnabas Health per our vaccine mandate policy. A spokeswoman said in an emailed statement, quote, 62 of those staff members were per diem employees who worked occasional shifts across our organization. Other health systems across the state of New Jersey have implemented vaccine mandates for workers, some including Hackensack Meridian Health, University Hospital in Newark, and Virtual Health in South Orange, New Jersey. Now we'll send it over to Molly Stowe for your five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. Molly? Thanks, Maria. Hi, Pirates. I'm Molly Stowe here to bring you your five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. I hope you enjoyed those cooler temperatures at the beginning of this week because the warmer weather is back. Today, we have a beautiful sunny day with a high of 74 and a low of 49. The clouds start to roll in Thursday with a high of 73 and a low of 57. We start to drop down in temperatures again on Friday with a mostly cloudy day and a high of 67 and a low of 51. We're back in the autumn temperatures once again this weekend with a high of 62 on Saturday and a low of 46. The clouds are going to stick around on Sunday as we anticipate a high of 62 and a low of 41. That will do it for your five-day weather forecast. Once again, I'm Molly Stowe. Now back to Maria and Brian at the desk with more news from across the country. A Miami private school that previously would not allow teachers to return to school if they were vaccinated is now asking students to stay home for 30 days following receiving any dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. In the letter issued to parents, the Kentner Academy stated, uh, because of the potential impact on other students in our school community, Vaccinated students will need to stay at home for 30 days post-vaccination for each dose and booster they receive and may return to school after 30 days as long as the student is healthy and symptom-free. The CDC, on its page dedicated to myths and facts about vaccines, vaccine shedding is the term used to describe the release or discharge of any of the vaccine components in or outside of the body. Vaccine shedding can only occur when a vaccine contains a weakened version of the virus. None of the vaccines authorized for use in the U.S. contain a, li a live virus. The University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill can keep affirmative action, a judge rules. Students for fair admissions vowed to immediately appeal in a case that was originally filed in 2014 that appears to be headed for the Supreme Court. The university may continue to use race as a factor in its admissions process, a federal judge ruled Monday. Judge Loretta C. Biggs rejected the argument of a conservative nonprofit legal group that is attempting to dismantle college affirmative action policies across the country. Judge Biggs said that the school's use of race in deciding which students to admit was narrowly tailored and that it had tried to consider race neutral alternatives. She also stated that UNC has met its burden in demonstrating that it has a genuine and compelling interest in achieving the educational benefits of diversity. The plaintiff, a group called Thank Students for Fair Admissions, vowed to immediately appeal and the case now appears to be en route for the Supreme Thank Court, you. which is currently considering whether to hear a similar case against Harvard University. That's going to wrap up today's episode of Pirate News. I'm Brian Shaw. And I'm Maria Lewandowski. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, wear a mask, and have a great day.